once upon a time, a beautiful Victorian house sat here. There was nothing in the world wrong with it except that the porch needed to be replaced. But First Baptist Church, they used to be over there, wanted it. They already had that gravel lot right there that had their buses parked there. But that house that used to sit here was quite lovely. Now, it didn't have all the fancy gingerbread and all of that, but it was still a lovely solid house. Why did First Baptist minister, Sean, I think his last name was Parker, wanted it torn down? And why did the deacons want it torn down? Well, allegedly they were gonna make this into a parking lot. And as you can see, it's not. It's a grassy field devoid of a beautiful home. Here's the Lee home across the street. There is a picture of this house. Uh, I'll see if I can dig up. But what is significant about this house is it was a very nice example of the early Victorian architecture. And there are only a couple of houses like it in the community that are still standing. And they tore this one down. It was a perfectly good house. Also, a church that no longer sits here is now out on Blue Cut, which is fine. I'm glad they moved out there. That building had a lot of issues. Wanted more parking, even though they have a parking lot here on Sundays. And on the other side of that medical arts building are two parking lots. And then, of course, behind the library is a large parking lot. No one says they're not allowed to use those parking lots. So why did they want to tear this house down? You know, churches are supposed to be stewards of the earth. They're also, there's a scripture out there that's something about uh, not tearing down and destroying old things just because they're old. Anyways, I'm sad that this house is no longer here. I remember it from my childhood and as a young adult. Probably some of you remember it too. But... This is also part of why I do preservation work because so many people fought for this building and the church was dead set on destroying it. For instance, I know of four different people who called persistently trying to find out how to put an offer in and to try and buy the house. Their phone calls weren't even answered. Now, this was not recent as you can tell the house has been gone a while uh, and it is not the current pastor he has nothing to do with this this is long before his tenure but the shameful thing is is that somebody was successful in putting in offers on this house very reasonable offers when the house still stood trying to save the house and every one of their offers was refused What's even sadder is that the director of the CVB, who also sat on and still sits on the Mississippi Department of Archives and History, didn't do more to fight for this because it was her church that wanted to tear it down. As a matter of fact, uh, one of her employees wrote uh, an editorial or maybe it was a small article or maybe it was a Facebook post on the Save the Friendship House, the irony in that name, Save the Friendship House Facebook page, and she was admonished by Carpenter for posting anything about the house because, as Carpenter said, you know that's my church. So, for some reason, Carpenter didn't try and preserve the history in this town and the history in this town is what draws our tourism. Anyways, that's my little rant today about the efforts or the lack of efforts of the CVB and the preservation of land and buildings in Columbus, Mississippi. Thank you for coming with me on my little tour of 7th Street North.
in Columbus, Mississippi. I'm right across from the Lee Home and the Columbus Public Library and the Ten Tom Waterway offices and their museum, which is a fabulous little museum that if you ever get a chance to go, you should, and you should go to the Lee Home. Anyways, thanks for coming with me on this little tour.